Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome back to another video. Today we are reacting to episode two, season two of Vita Carnis by Darian Quilloy. I apologize if I'm not saying that name correctly. Like, it's one of those names where I feel like it could be pronounced another way. Absolutely amazing creator, creator of Vita Carnis, like I said, and just an amazing artist in general. Like really, really good. Very good at uh, drawing creepy things. I highly recommend you go follow them on Instagram as well. So in the last episode, we learned that potentially the trimmings, the little turtle looking cute things, potentially have a hive mind and what's affected with one could be affected with all of them. A lot of people kind of combated that by saying maybe it's just the way they communicate with each other. Like maybe they're sending signals saying this sound is bad. But the whole reason I thought that was because the sound that was played when they were sprayed with water affected the ones that were never sprayed with water who were outside of the experiment zone. So that to me suggests some kind of hive mind functionality. But yeah, we're going to jump into episode two. And I believe from the thumbnail here, we're going to be covering mimics. That's very interesting and exciting because I don't know how they're going to be testing mimics in this world. This was actually recommended to me on my Discord by two people, Hex and Sprite Z. So thank you for the recommendation, guys. If you guys want to send me something scary, consider joining my Discord down below. I recently refreshed the Discord link because a lot of you were saying that you couldn't join. So it should be a new link now. Join there. Put your scary thing into Scare Bass submission channel and if I react to it, I will give you a shout out. Without further ado, guys, we're going to jump straight into this. This is Vita Carnis Revealed Progress. From what I can see, the little screenshots I've saw at a scene of this through the community tab, Darian is big on practical effects, and I love that so much. So get ready. This video talks about and shows imagery of graphic content like flashing lights, gore, violence, death. Viewer discretion is advised. Here we go. God. Here we go. Okay, so this was... I, was this happening in the last episode? Sorry, I didn't mean to pause it straight away. I know you guys are going to be on my back. But it was kind of mixing in documentary with the experiments of like, for example, the last one was the trimmings, the cruel in general, and the singularity. And it was kind of showing like a, a mirrors of like a documentary. Almost like a narrative. Only the most beautiful, only the most unique specimens will be moving forward. Oh my god, hang on a sec. Long... Go back. They had a freaking like best in show the... trimmings. This is incredible. Be... You know those cat shows where they're like, oh, look at the fur. Look how long. Look at the coats. Imagine doing that with a trimming. Forward. All right, I'll try not to pause there as much, guys. I apologize. Fossils hidden on the earth. Mm -hmm. And plenty make their way into rivers and streams. Interesting. You can look for them too. Right, okay. Dr. Adrim Griffiths, meat snake specialist. That name is still cr pretty crazy to me. It, re it requires a pause. Recreation project manager, progress report. Audio log. Progress report on the meat snake recreation project. Meat snake. From our previous report. The juvenile meat snake we selected was grown in a standard captivity cell until maturity. Okay. The specimen we had selected was now. Let me just see if there's captions here for you guys. It's auto generated, but. Screw it. An acceptable size for the project to begin. Holy crap, it looks like a big ass shrimp. There's the practical effects for you guys. That looks really. That looks like it's made out of. What does that. That looks like it's genuinely made out of flesh. Twice a day, we fed it fresh meat scraps roadkill making sure that it received the necessary materials uh, like bones and organs to grow yeah so the meat snake guys if you don't remember they take on the skull they can take on different skulls so you can of the thing that it maybe ate so it can have like a deer skull or like it can just have any skull that it wants basically four days into feeding the specimen's mood mellowed out the usual intimidation display was now a patient eagerness it seems that the specimen now understands that we are feeding it. Uh-huh. Eleven days into feeding. Oh, God. The specimen has slowed down immensely. Mm-hmm. It has also been occasionally rejecting food. Rejecting it food? It looks like we have been overwhelming it, not giving it enough time to properly digest and implement the material. Feeding right. has been reduced to once a day, but with an increase of portion size. It's on a bulk. It's on a cut, maybe. 19 days into feeding. Oh, dear. The meat snake has almost shut down entirely. Why? 
no longer reacts to external is it because it can no longer grow they've like they've restrained this thing in and put loads of bags on it so that it can't physically grow anymore so maybe it's eating just means that it's going to be more painful for factors it. it still accepts food but with assistance a makeshift oh, mechanism no. was made to help the feeding process Fable it got super lazy gun to show the hue of the specimen skin has been turning shades darker uh-huh sampling period seems to be approaching sooner than expected i love this practical effect by the way really nice day 21 into feeding the specimen has reached all the required criteria to begin sampling we managed to obtain a skin patch in what did we you do with cold resistance the typical meat snake skin can hold its integrity up to negative 30 degrees celsius wow the specimen sample survived down to negative 100 degrees, wow. even maintaining flexibility. Oh my god! Next, the heat resistance test. The sample was able to withstand impressive temperatures. What we were the? only able to bring the temp up to 3,000 degrees Celsius before only, we had to bring in new equipment. Only 3,000 degrees and you had to bring in more equipment. So this thing can survive in cold, extreme heats. We used some welding equipment and determined that the sample's limit was capped at around 5,000 degrees Celsius. Oh dear. 5,000. Sample testing was interrupted by a peculiar event with the specimen. What happened? Personnel during the routine feeding found that the meat snake had escaped its restraints. How? By performing mitosis. Oh my god, it's been to two. two. Organisms were simply wandering the lab at the time the project has been halted for now wow and the two meat snakes have been moved back into the original enclosure so that's how they we are preparing live on at the start of the new process report and log wow okay i think there was mention of that in the documentary wasn't there you can make your own sieve at home mesh will catch large debris allowing smaller things to pass through but you uh, can add more layers with different mesh to catch uh. more things i just straight up picked up dog shit and started going through it yeah look what i'm raisin so far but there can only be one winner curd and raisins oh my god look at patty it's like venom hang on there is definitely some kind of story being told here. I don't know if you guys can read that. I'll have a look in the description beforehand, but I think there was maybe another one when it last um, did this kind of weird distortion. So we'll have a look in the description or comment section afterwards. Dr. Farron Brones, mimic uh, expert. Here we go, guys. This, month's progress. this was what I was looking forward to or very curious about. Albeit a little bit late by a few months. Anyways, it's been a bit slow, but there have been some fascinating findings. Okay. I guess I'll start with the juveniles. Juveniles. Spicy fellas. Already chock full of hunting instinct. Their hunting patterns are similar to other ambush predators. They will wait to like catch their prey with the element of surprise. They prefer to hunt prey smaller than themselves, stuff they can take down easily. But once they are older, they start getting a little cockier. Oh my god. But they have the killing technique to back it up. Look at those they fingers, man. These things are like salad fingers. With the throat or neck to deliver a kill as fast as possible. Hang on, though. They... Uh, I'm sorry to pause, guys. But look, if you notice, these are human teeth. I don't think any of these are canines. They, look like, they all look like molars. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these are fangs. So it's, it's weird to me that they hunt only humans. Because they've got the, like... Humans, we have these teeth that can like gnaw on berries and vegetables and stuff because we're not solely reliant on just meat. We can have these teeth. So I feel like maybe they should be all canines or, or fangs, sorry. As fast as possible. But once they metamorphosize into their adult form, it's harder to determine their patterns. Okay. Ew. Ugh. Ah! Oh my god, that's disgusting. The juveniles we do manage to get into their adult form don't last very long. Oh wow. They simply hide away, rejecting all food we provide. Oh, it looks depressed. As well known, adults only eat Mimics are just teenagers, guys. They're going through it, man. They're going through the motions. Flesh. 
The adults we have all die to starvation. Well, they didn't want to the eat. The candidates for research are the ones we capture out in the wild. The reason they die of starvation is because they only specifically hunt humans, right? I don't think they eat anything else. So if you're not feeding them humans, they're going to die. They last long. Which suggests to me that this company is actually not unethical. This is quite an ethical company right here that isn't feeding humans just to get some test experiments. Most likely due to them already having food and nutrients in their systems. This is really cool, it's man. not something I dwell on too often. I am thankful for the ones That's what I do, guys, when I sleepwalk. I got several adults. Even a few humanoid ones. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's a freaking mimic. That just looks like a freaking... A crackhead that you come across. Down r around the corner. God, I need to keep my eye out, actually. We're able to understand Maybe they're mimics. How they work before they eventually whittle away. <clears throat> uh, the hunting tactics of the adult forms change drastically from their previous form. Hunting now takes much longer as they observe and watch their prey. Wow. They are very cautious. So it's like um, xenomorphs and predators. They, they're just very cleverly watching and observing, taking down patterns and when they can attack, the basically. Best opportunity. They take advantage of anything they can to get an upper hand. Their Such most as. popular tactic nowadays is climbing inside of furniture. Ugh. Freshly Ugh. metamorphosed adults are roughly 160 centimeters in height, but can fold themselves tightly into small spaces. 160 centimeters? One found inside one of those old-fashioned mannequins. That's like five for eight, and isn't it? Older adults still fit exceptionally well, well in Less places. than that. It's funny. We didn't even know they could do this until the late 70s. They weren't even called mimics then. Oh, they, they were called, called uh, butchers. Butchers. They changed it because its name better matched the description of characters in some kids' board game. Anyways, uh, the hunting kids' board game. Are... You mean a freaking Dungeons and Dragons? You can become a mimic in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and what's what's interesting? My friend Josh, who is a big D and D enthusiast, told me that a mimic, because usually in D and D, it's just furniture that they can take over, and they can like you know they they can put on false walls basically, and then lure you in, and then just attack from the wall. But a corpse is considered an object. So usually the mimics can only mimic objects, but because a corpse is considered an object, they can technically mimic humans by going get like killing someone and then taking over that body, which is a terrifying thought. But hey, man, I love D&D. Let's roll for dexterity. Five. Brilliant. Using to say the least. All depictions of their patterns have been wrong in one way or another. Are they between the sofa there? I mean, the mattress. They keep changing it. In reality, it is almost completely random. Right. Each case in the wild is different, and it's hard to determine why in captivity. Plus, human testing is a no-go. Even though yeah. I volunteered myself. You volunteered yourself for what exactly? To be eaten by a mimic? What is this, like a Craigslist ad? I feel so close to figuring it out. Oh, God. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. The next stages are even harder to... Wait, how long do these tapes have to be? Oh, man, you just wasted like five seconds there. So there's a next stage that he's going to be working towards. How are they going to do like... So I'm assuming they're doing experiments on these every single kind of alteration of the cruel and the, the creatures. How are they going to do like the harvester, the monolith, the... What's the other one called? Uh, the host, the freaking... They've got the singularity. Yeah, look at it go. Look, this one would have fallen through our first sift. There are plenty of other fun things uh. you can find as well. Oh no. My Gold. sift isn't working. Looks like there's a hole in your mesh. Make sure your mesh isn't damaged, uh -huh. or else something might slip through. I feel like that might be a reference to the testing facility and the mesh being like the fence. I think something's going to get out, which I guess doesn't really make a difference because these things already exist in the world anyway. So, but I guess the difference would be you've just pissed off this creature and now it's going to be wanting to kill. 
Footage of the incident with V1 involving the cleanup team in te V1? What happened? Oh god. It's a singularity. Personnel to room 21. So in the last video we saw that a cow was brought in. What's happened? What? In test chamber one. Oh, stay, stay calm. Help us where? Where are they? Oh, uh, just try to stay calm. Oh, oh. What? Where are they? Are they off camera? All right, we're here. We're going to help you. Lower the ladder slowly. This is going to hurt. Oh, okay, lovely. Okay, hold still. Ready? Now. What is a femur breaker? What's happening? Hang on. What's happening to him? Get him out of here now! Get him out! Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. No, no, let's keep playing. Okay. I feel like what happened there is. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait till the end. We'll, we'll we'll do a bit of speculation at the end. Okay. Interesting. Leg broke. Okay, their leg broke. Thanks for watching and God bless. More to come. Ooh, 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 looking forward to it, man. Okay, so what I think happened at the end there was either they. I think the singularity had some kind of reaction to the injury and most likely it was sort of like blood maybe or flesh there and maybe once it did something it, it evolved like maybe it has because you saw in the last video when the cow was put in there it just turned into cruel basically so I think what happened there was he was injured or whatever once the injury was like he said this is going to hurt he did something maybe he tried snapping it back or something like that or maybe the pain or something like that was an indication for this this singularity to be like okay we're going to turn this thing into cruel so i think that maybe this guy's broken leg started turning into cruel itself which is a horrifying thought because it means that you can be turned into cruel while you're still alive and maybe cruel in itself is a living organism in which it's aware of itself i don't know i'm just i'm going off of um complete just theorizing right now but i love series like this because it really allows me to think about what it could be because we still don't know really know what the singularity does or is or why this all these creatures are attracted to it or why they're attracted to radio waves and just uh, like tv waves in general i love it so it, it really opens the minds like what's going on here i gotta say the practical effects for the both the mimic and the meat snake there were fantastic i love me some practical effects here we go let me go through the um if there was a anyone who decoded the the text there make sure your mesh isn't damaged otherwise something might slip through okay yeah so they were like i said they were hinting at maybe the facility being made out of mesh and maybe it's just the mimic is suggesting that a mimic can escape and if a mimic can escape and it's been starved to death because it only eats humans then if that thing gets out it's killing everybody and if it manages to kill all the employees in that facility or at least like half of them it's going to grow into something i think it's an alder mimic they're called which is like basically turns into something completely aldridge not in heights but just like in looks in itself Okay, so there's a message, 434. This is by uh, Malfi Rabbi 1009 Couldn't make out all of it, but I can see some words. I mirrored, brightened, and enhanced it. This is what I found. Date, line one, current something. Magnetic shifts and spikes present. Something, the formal, the earthquakes near something, probably a city. Something interferes with electronics. A small error led to something. Terminate. Right. So that is interesting. Obviously, there's something going on with electronics and the Vita Canis. Not sure what that connection is just yet. 
but I think over time we're going to learn what that is. I'm not sure what the next video is, if how they're going to do like experiments on a harvester or a host, I think it's called a host, but that is going to definitely be interesting for sure because harvesters require soil, I think, to unless they, they have a cage built with soil underneath. I have no idea. But I'm looking forward to that. And then there's monoliths. I don't, I don't think they're going to be experimenting with them anytime soon because they're literally all around this certain area, right? So they'd have to do their experiments outside for that. Anyway, there we go, guys. If you did enjoy, be sure to go check out Darian Quilloy. Go subscribe, go like the video, all that good stuff. Absolutely fantastic creator. And I love what they do. I always look forward to watching another video. It's just a pleasure to watch. And if you guys enjoyed watching this reaction video, why not leave a like, rate, and subscribe? This is the majority of my content reacting to analog horrors. Sometimes I play spooky games, not so much anymore. But basically, I do watch scary stuff. That is what I do, essentially. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.